guys, it's Sam and this is my first ever unhaul. A lot of these books have been sitting on my shelf for some time now, kind of designated to one shelf because I was thinking about getting rid of them and finally I decided I need to do a little bit of a cleanse of my shelves and officially get rid of these books, admit defeat, admit that I'm not going to be reading them anytime soon, and just get rid of them. Just so that all of you know, by the time I post this video, all these books will already be gone. I'm going to take them to a used bookstore and get rid of them. I am showing some arcs in here as well and the arcs will be available at some point for giveaway, probably on Twitter so I will intermittently put up an art giveaway so if you're interested in any of the arcs that I show which will be towards the end of the video then look forward to those but the other books I am not going to be giving away or shipping or anything because that would be a hell of a lot of shipping and I just can't do that I wish I could right now but I just can't so all these books I'll kind of explain why I'm giving them away some of them I've read and liked but didn't like enough to keep on my shelves some of them I have replacement copies for some I didn't read and have no interest in reading anymore etc etc so let's get going I have a whole heap of books to unhaul the first book is Entwined by Heather Dixon. I read this last month and I enjoyed it, but I read it on an audiobook and I don't plan on picking this back up in the physical copy. Also, I do love this cover, but this is a library binding, so I don't really feel like keeping it on my shelf at this point and figured I would give it to a home that would appreciate it a little more than I will. Then I have three books by Gabrielle Zevin. They include All These Things I've Done, Memoirs of a Teenage Amnesiac, and Elsewhere. These were all books that I was interested in originally when I bought them, but I decided that I'm just not really interested anymore. These two are contemporary, I believe, and this one is kind of like a dystopian. I haven't heard really a ton about these, and at this point I feel like if I read them they'd be like three-star reads, and I just feel like reading stuff that I'm really excited about. Then there's The Lost Girl by Sangu Mandana. This is one that I was actually really interested in when I first got it. It kind of sounds a little bit like Never Let Me Go by Kazu Ichiguru. And it's about a girl who is raised to be the replacement for another girl from like a rich family and stuff. So she basically doesn't have her own life. And then the girl that she's supposed to replace, if anything happens, does die. And she kind of has to step up into that role. I just am not really in the mood for it, I don't think I'm going to be at all. And if I want to read that kind of story, I think I'll read Never Let Me Go. So I just don't really feel like I'm going to read this one. Then we have Firebug, My Lish McBride. This is about a girl who has elemental fire abilities and she's being chased by a magical mafia. It sounds like something I might enjoy, but I, again, I haven't really heard a ton about it. Again, I feel like it might be just like a three-star read for me. This one I might be giving away though because it is signed. So I might be giving this one away because I know someone else might really appreciate that, but I just don't think I'm going to read it personally. Then we have Hopeless by Colleen Hoover. I did not enjoy this book whatsoever when I read it, so I feel like I could give it away to somebody who's actually going to enjoy it. I have a review for this if you're interested in why I didn't enjoy it. It'll be linked on the screen. We have Sweet Venom by Terry Lynn Childs. This one I'm actually really kind of on the fence about. It is about girls that are descendants of Medusa and there are three like triplets and they didn't know each other. They were raised apart and they are all monster hunters and they are actually hunting all like the Greek monsters. So it's like a Greek myth retelling kind of elements of that and it sounds like I might like it but then again I, I haven't heard a ton about it and it sounds like it might just be three stars for me. And I can't take many more Greek retelling disappointments in my life after I read the Goddess Test series. So I'm not sure if I even want to give this one a go, but I'm really torn about this. So I might keep it. I might not. Ugh. If you guys have read this, let me know what you thought of it. Then we have Defiance by CJ Redwine. This is another one that I'm not sure if I'm going to give up. I'm not positive because it sounds like I might enjoy it, but then again, it sounds like a very typical kind of synopsis. It seems like it takes place in a dystopian world. The women are protected by the men. Everything pretty much is capitalized in the synopsis. It's one of those synopsis. So like protectors and wasteland and eh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. Again, if you guys have read this, let me know what you thought. But right now I'm kind of like not really feeling it. Then we have Tender Morsels by Margot Lanigan. This one I was really intrigued about when I first heard about it, when I first got it, and I've just lost interest over time. I also recently tried to read one of Margot Lanigan's other books and just didn't really enjoy the writing style of that one, so I'm not really interested in picking this one up, really. I've also heard that it's a little bit disturbing, a little bit creepy, and disturbing and creepy just aren't really my thing. Again, this is pretty big, and I'm just not in the mood to really pick it up. I don't see myself reaching for it anytime soon. Then we have Beautiful Disaster by Jamie McGuire. I was actually only holding on to this because I want to be able to hold it up in tag videos where people ask about your least favorite book, but I'm never going to forget this. I will just include an image on the screen from now on and not have to hold this book. I hate seeing it on my shelf. I hate it so much. I'm getting this bad juju out of my life. Again, if you guys want to know why I didn't like this book, I will link my review on the screen. Then we have Ignite by Lily Paradise. I ended up reading this book for review last year and I just didn't end up enjoying it. It wasn't my thing. It's a new adult contemporary and it just didn't really appeal to me. So I'm just getting rid of it. 
Then we have Mystic City by Theo Lawrence. This is the first book in a dystopian trilogy, and I did not like it when I read it. I read it last year. It was not good. The characters were awful. It was just really poorly written, and again, it was a dystopian that I've seen before, and it, it, there was insta-love. It was not good, and I feel no need to hold on to it, besides the fact that the cover is stunning, but that's not enough anymore. It's not enough. Then we have Razorhurst by Justine Larbastillier, I think is how you pronounce it. I was kind of intrigued about this one when I first got it. It is about a girl who can, I believe, see ghosts, and it's around like a mafia time period in like the 1920s, and there's a lot kind of going on with it, but I'm just not really into paranormal right now, like at all, and I don't see myself getting back into paranormal anytime soon, so although I've heard that this is actually pretty good, it's just not my style, and I would rather give it to somebody who is going to enjoy it way more than I will. Then we have Ordinary Beauty by Laura Weiss. This is actually a book outlet purchase. I was just going through a bunch of contemporaries on book outlet when I first started my channel because I was looking for different things to read, and I picked this one up, and it's kind of like a darker contemporary, which I do tend to enjoy, but I just don't feel like I'm ever going to want to read it. Again, it's a story that I just feel like will end up being three stars. Maybe it would surprise me, maybe not, but I just don't feel like I'm ever going to gravitate towards it. There's a lot of other contemporaries that are darker that I want to read, and this one has been just sitting there kind of looking at me for over a year now, and I'm just never going to get to it. Then we have Matched and Crossed by Ali Condi. These are the first two books in the Matched trilogy, which I have not been able to finish. I am on Reached. I'm listening to an audiobook, or I was months ago, and I can't finish it. I find the characters insufferable, and I just, it, I don't like it at all. I don't like it at all. I liked Matched when I first read it like three years ago, but since then I've just kind of moved past the dystopian genre and the dystopian love triangle and everything that was coming out right after Hunger Games. I was really into it back then, and I'm just not into it so much right now. I just don't like all the tropes that are in this particular series because, again, it follows that kind of Hunger games e mold about everything that was coming out around that time. So if I'm going to read Dystopian, it's going to be a little better than this. I just didn't really enjoy this one, so I'm giving it away to somebody who hopefully will enjoy it way more than I do. Then we have After You'd Gone by Maggie O'Farrell. This is a book I have read as well, and it is an adult contemporary. It's an interesting story about a woman who is kind of regaining some of her memories, and she is depressed and suicidal, and there's all these kind of like flashback things going on. I know a lot of people really like this, but I was not one of them. It was just a three star for me. Probably looking back on it, it might have been like a two, 2.5. I just kind of slogged through this and I found the story kind of predictable and it really didn't tug on my heartstrings the way that I wanted it to. Then we have How It Went Down by Kikla Magoon. This is actually a book that I was interested in reading when I first got it. It is about a town that experiences a shooting and it's pretty relevant for modern times and America and gun violence because we seem to have something happen every couple weeks here. But I just don't feel like reading it because of that. I feel like I hear about it all the time and I don't really want to read a book about it when it's my reality all the time, hearing about it on the news and being bombarded with it. So I know a lot of other people will enjoy this and will want to read this, so I'd rather, again, give it away to somebody who would actually enjoy it. Then we had The Forsaken by Lisa M. Stasse. I've talked about this book before because I have read it, again, one of the books I read when I first joined BookTube. It is a dystopian and it kind of reminds me of like a Maze Runner mashup. It is not the best written story. It is predictable and there is insta-love, but I inhaled this book when I first read it, but I do not want to continue with the series. This was fine. I don't need to know anything more about the characters. I don't need to continue. It's a trilogy. I don't care though. It was very addictive for some weird reason, but I have no desire to continue any more of the series. Then we have Struck by Jennifer Bosworth. This is about a girl who has lightning abilities, which is what really appealed to me about it, but it ends up being less about lightning abilities and more about like cults and end of the world cults is taking place around kind of like an apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic period. And there's all these like battling cults. And I was here for the lightning zap zap and there was not really any of that. I got like a third of the way into this and put it down and I just don't think I'm ever going to pick it back up. It is not what I wanted. I want lightning abilities, not battling cults at the end of the world. Not my jam. Then we had The Lux by Anna Goberson. This is a very popular series. It's like a five book series as historical fiction kind of gossip girl where all of the people are just kind of upper class, going to balls, going to parties, gossiping, stabbing each other in the back, all that kind of thing. I didn't really end up enjoying this one that much. I think it was like a 2.5 stars when I read it. It was kind of enjoyable fluff in a way, but it was also kind of how I feel when I watch Gossip Girl sometimes, where I'm like, I hate this a little bit, but it's so addictive. That's how I felt. I just don't really feel like repeating that experience over and over with other books in the series, so I'm just gonna let this one go. 
The rest of the books I have to show you are advanced reader copies. So, so again, these are books that will pop up on giveaways and such on Twitter. So if you're interested in winning any of these arcs in the future, go and follow me on Twitter and I will post those kind of randomly. I don't know how often they will be because I do have to pay for shipping and stuff and money is a little tight. If you guys don't know, my cat recently went through an emergency surgery. I posted about it on Twitter and stuff, but it was expensive. So I don't exactly have the funds right this minute to be doing a bunch of art giveaways. So in the future, sometime, there will be giveaways for some of these arcs and you will have opportunity to win those. The first three are arcs that I won in a random giveaway at a book festival and I had no idea what they were, just kind of like a raffle situation. So I was not at all interested really in those books then and I'm not really interested still. So I just feel like giving them away to somebody who might actually enjoy them. And they are The Curiosity by Stephen Kiernan, The Arsonist by Sue Miller, and The Last Enchantments by Charles Finch. I'm not even sure what genre those are all in. I know they are adult fiction, but I'm not sure what genre they fall into. Some of the synopsises are very vague or they just have reviews on the back. So I don't know a ton about them. I was never interested in them to begin with and it's just time for them to get off my shelves. I then have Dodger by Terry Pratchett. This is a book I tried to listen to on audiobook and couldn't really get through. It's about a kid who is living in Victorian England and he actually ends up going on this kind of like adventure and meeting a bunch of either historical or fictional characters from that time period like Charles Dickens and Jack the Ripper and people like that. So I just didn't really end up liking the writing style of this when I was listening to it. And since I really didn't enjoy the listening experience, I don't plan on picking this one up anytime soon on a physical format. Then we have Famous in Love by Rebecca Searle. I just don't feel like I'm ever gonna pick this up. This is a YA contemporary about a girl who kind of rises to instant fame. She's like spotted at a mall or something like that and she ends up kind of having to live her life now in the spotlight. I know it's a trilogy. I know that some people really enjoy it. It's just not really my thing and I don't see myself ever picking this one up. Then we have Layla by Nikki Kelly. This is one that I heard a lot of things about last year when it came out. I think it came out in October last year and it's about a girl who might be like a vampire, might be a zombie. It says she knows she's different. She doesn't age. She has no family. <sighs> From the synopsis I'm just kind of not really interested. Also the cover is a little bit creepy and if it is about zombies, zombies aren't my thing. They just aren't. Vampires are a little bit. I'm willing to give vampires a shot but zombies and like creepiness not so much. Then we have A Million Miles Away by Laura Avery. I read this one back in July, I believe, and I enjoyed it, but I don't see myself ever rereading it. And if I do want to reread it, I will either get it from the library or buy my own copy. Then we have Fans of the Impossible Life by Kate Skelsa. This is one that I didn't end up enjoying that much and I don't see myself rereading. I've done a review for this, so I will link that on the screen. Then we have Cut Both Ways by Carrie Misrobi, and this is another one that I have recently read and I did not enjoy whatsoever. I actually really hated it. So I don't feel like I have this on my shelf anymore. I also have a review for this and it will be linked if you want to hear more of my thoughts and why I need this as far away from me as possible. Then we have Illusionarium by Heather Dixon. This is also one that I read I think in the springtime and I end up enjoying this. It's a steampunk adventure story but I don't see myself ever rereading it. And if I do want to read it again I will just buy it in a physical copy because I do really enjoy this cover but this edition can go to somebody else who wants to read it. Whew. So that is it for my unhaul you guys. I am actually really proud of myself. I thought long and hard about some of these and I just am happy to kind of have them go. So comment down below and let me know any of them that you are surprised that I'm getting rid of. I don't think that any of these are particularly surprising. It's not like I have any really big favorites in here or anything but if you have any on here that surprised you comment down below and let me know. So thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!